Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke, my pronouns are she, her, and today we have a humongous book haul. Like it's massive. It's a lot of books. <laughs> okay, let me just count real quick. That's a receipt that I don't want to look at. How many books? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 23 books in this book haul. Yikes. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I went to Ottawa. I went to one of my favorite used bookstores and we went to a large indigo store. I work at a teeny tiny one, so it's always fun to go into the big ones and, and kind of go wild. And wild I went. Last week, I went to our local used bookstore and picked up a few things. Let's just show you what I bought. Can I get this off my lap without dropping all of them? I don't know. Ow. We did it. This first stack of books I picked up at our local used bookshop. I got um, a classic in my preferred penguin classic style with the orange author name and the art piece on the cover. I don't know why I picked up one classic like this and decided all of the classics that I own I want to have in this format. And so I have a nice little collection going. I bought a bunch of them recently and I just love them. I just think they're gonna look so nice all together. So this one is Susanna Rosen, Charlotte Temple and Lucy Temple, which is apparently was very popular popular in 1794 when it was first published. And it seems like an interesting story. The story of a young English girl who elopes to America, there only to be cruelly abandoned. The book was repeatedly dramatized during the 19th century and its theatrical progeny provided inspiration for D.W. Griffith's masterpiece, Way Down East. So that sounds like it'll be really interesting. Have that. Then I also bought a copy of The Break by Katerina Vermette. She's a Métis writer from Treaty One Territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I have another book of hers, which is called The Stranger, but I believe it's a continuation from this book, The Break. So I thought I'd pick that up. This one is a little bit water damaged. Um, however, it's already looking better than it was. I think if I squish it under some large books for a long time, I can flatten it back out to a decent uh, flatness. So I'm looking forward to that. I hear so many amazing things about Katerina Vermette, so I'm very excited. And then I thrifted the first three books in the Twilight series in their like original covers. I haven't read the Twilight series since they were like first coming out and I just thought, you know, I saw them. I'm intrigued to reread them. Twilight has become popular again in the last couple of years. I never actually read the entire series, so I figured I'm gonna buy them. So I did. Okay, the next book that I have is a recent release by Casey McQuiston. It's I Kissed Sarah Wheeler. It just came out this past week. This is the Indigo exclusive edition, so I don't know what exclusive content is in there, but there's something. Uh, this one here, it's a YA. It's about a girl who kisses, I believe, three people and then totally disappears. So it's like a bit of a mystery as well as a little bit of a romance. And it just sounds really good. It's also like stunning. Like look at these end pages and also the spine. Stunning, but I'm not done. We have some very pretty stuff going on underneath the dust jacket as well. I am currently reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and I loved Red, White and Royal Blue. So I went, you know what? Let's do it. Let's just by every single book that this author writes, because why not? The next book I bought, um, this one I got in Ottawa, it's A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn, and it's just stunning. Like, can we just appreciate how beautiful 
this cover is. It's a YA fantasy, I believe, about the art of tea making. Like what an interesting thing to write a story about. Also, I love tea, so this was just a no brainer for me. It's also very, very pretty, so. Oh, I just love it. Okay. The next book I bought um, just recently was Emily Henry's Book Lovers. This is another really recent release that came out just this past week. Um, this is one of my book club picks. So, I mean, I had to buy it. It's also just like stunning. There's like books on the back and I've heard amazing things about this. So I'm very excited to read it. I'm really getting into rom-coms lately, so I've just got a whole whack ton of them. And I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I've heard that the characters are like bitchy and rude and that it's amazing. So I'm super pumped about this. I'm very excited that we have it for book club. And uh, yeah, this one is uh, basically, I think, are they, they both work in the publishing industry, I believe. And um, it's almost like anti-tropes, like the main character is not your classic hero. The main character and her sister go away on a trip because her sister's convinced she needs to become the heroine in her own story. But instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with handsome country doctors or bulging four-armed bartenders, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. I'm very excited to see what this is. I've heard lots of great things, so looking forward to that. Next, we have the highly anticipated Holly Black's Book of Night. This is also the Indigo exclusive edition. Um, it's also just absolutely stunning. Like, look at that. I'm very excited about this. This is Holly Black's first um, adult fantasy. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Holly Black wrote the Cruel Prince trilogy. They're a very popular YA book series and I enjoyed them, but I just wanted more from them. So I'm very much looking forward to her adult book. I just can't wait to see what she's done with it. I've heard great things and I'm very excited. This next little pile is, um, Kind of a combination of some things I found at the used bookstore and some things I got from Indigo, but it's basically just a, a stack of classics in my Penguin Black Classic Editions. We have Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility, Jane Austen's Mansfield Park, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Charles Dickens' Little Dorrit, and Louisa May Alcott Little Women. So I'm very excited for those finds. I am currently scouring for um, an edition of Pride and Prejudice that is in this edition with the orange lettering for the author. That piece de resistance for my little classic collection, you know, <laughs> currently. So I just got a bunch of those. I always, always see them when I'm out at used bookstores. So I usually pick up a bunch um, from authors that I know or titles I recognize. I don't pick up everything, but just some of the things that I, I see and slowly I'm getting a whack ton of them, and I love that. I picked up a thrifted copy of The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I had this on loan from the library, didn't get a chance to read it before my loan um, expired, and I just have been looking at it over and over again. I've heard amazing things about this book, so I was so pleased that I managed to find a copy of it at the used bookstore and it's in really great condition so I'm very happy about this. I hear that it has some really great representation not only um the POC rep but like sexuality rep, mental health rep kind of thing within this book so I'm very excited to read this one. I just hear amazing things. I feel like I say that about every single book I buy. I hear amazing things about it. Yeah that's why I bought it. <laughs> it's fine. The next book I bought is this beautiful edition of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. It's just stunning, gorgeous. We love the gold foiling. It's got a ribbon bookmark and also some gold edges. It's just stunning. I believe it's probably from 
the 70s this version but I can't not go to this bookshop and oh yes 1975 I can't not go to this bookshop uh, in Ottawa and not pick up a stunning edition of something I think the last time I was there I bought a couple of plays play collections that are beautifully bound like this I just can't go and not pick up a book like that. Also, I'm very excited because it's some more classics and I would love to get through a whole bunch of the classics. They're classics for a reason, right? So I would love to read them and just experience them at least once. So now I have a beautiful edition of that. The next book I picked up is this kind of old, a little bit beat up edition of James Joyce's Ulysses. This one is from, I believe, 1949. And ever since I read The Paris Bookseller by Carrie Maher, which is about the wonderful, wonderful publisher of this book, um, I have wanted an edition of this as close to the original publication edition as possible. And so when I found this, I, even though it's a little bit torn here, I was like, I have to have it. It's beautiful. This particular book was printed roughly 20 years after the original, but it's beautiful. I don't think I'll get a copy from 1922. If I ever do, that's like collector's dream for me. Um, also, I've never read any of James Joyce, and I know James Joyce writes in a very particular way that people often um, question because I don't believe he uses quotation marks for his dialogue. I believe he uses these like sort of M dashes at the beginning and a lot of his writing, at least in this book, I believe a lot of it is a uh, stream of consciousness. And I'm just so intrigued. This book here, when it was first being published, it was being published serially and it was banned in the United States um, because people thought it was pornographic, but it was just, it depicted real life in a very real way. Um, and the United States was like, no, Nope, too graphic, you banned. So a budding bookseller in Paris who owned the Shakespeare and Company bookstore in the 1920s thought that this book was a complete literary masterpiece and took about the wild task of publishing it. She'd never published anything before in her life and uh, she published this, which went on to be a massive success. So just like that whole story, um, makes me so intrigued to read Ulysses and um, others of James Joyce. So I'm very pleased with this. There is a very nice embossed bow on the cover and I'm not entirely sure if that has anything to do with Ulysses itself or if it is something to do with the publisher of this particular copy, but I guess I'll find out when I read it. Okay, the next book I picked up was Loveless by Alice Oseman. And I mean, if you haven't heard of Alice Oseman, Alice Oseman wrote the Heartstopper graphic novels, which has just recently been turned into a super hit TV show. I'm midway through the season, so nobody tell me anything. I'm just savoring the episodes, okay? I, to be fair, I've read the graphic novels, so I do know what happens, but I don't wanna know anything that goes on in the show. I wanna experience it for myself, so nobody say anything. However, I loved the Heartstopper graphic novels with my own whole entire heart. So I picked up Loveless, which is a story with a sexuality rep, which I think is just amazing. I would love to get all of Alice Oseman's books. Um, they have quite a few novels as well. Some that are kind of spin-offs from the Heartstopper graphic novels or the Heartstopper graphic novels are a spin-off of the novels. I don't know what came first, actually. However, I just want to read all of them. I just want to read all of them. I think there's amazing representation in Alice Usman's work, and I love that a lot. So I'm really, really looking forward to Loveless. We're nearly there. Are only four books left. Nearly there, nearly there. The next book I picked up from Indigo was City of Thorns, which I believe is a fantasy romance. It is the soft touch cover that just feels so nice. I love the soft touch covers. I think I said to my coworker that like, if I was a cat or if I could purr, like the soft touch covers would make me purr. They just make me so happy. I don't know. I have been seeing this all over Bookstagram and I just am intrigued. I hear it's spicy. I hear that she's like, uh, whew. So uh, I'm gonna give it a go. Next is a rom-com called Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. 
I am super looking forward to this. We have plus size rep. It's about fan fiction and cosplayers and I just love that so so much and I'm so excited about this book. I go yes bring out the nerds bring out the geeks give them to me. Got that one. Very looking forward to that. The other rom-com I got is If You Ask Me by Libby Hubshire. Very sorry if I've mispronounced that. This one is just your classic, classic rom-com. It sounds cute and uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> and then the last book I picked up is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I've just seen this everywhere. I've heard so many amazing things about it. This particular copy is a soft touch and I love that with my whole heart. So I ended up picking that up. And that's it, that's the whole book haul. I tried to make this quick and uh, not super in depth about all of them. I might do some reading vlogs while reading these where you will hear more about what the books are about, but I will leave links to all of these books <laughs> down in the description. If you're intrigued about any of them, you can go take a closer look at them from the description down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm just like, so excited to get into all of these. I am officially on a book buying ban that I have to stick to because I have expenses coming up that I can't no more for now. And I have piles of unread books off camera everywhere. So I just like need to read the ones that I own. I hope you enjoyed my book haul. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I recently purchased and what you thought of them. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.